Okay, I thought I'd do a video while my workspace is reasonably tidy here. Um, I never tidy it up, or I do like once every few years, and it was just getting so cluttered and piled up with stamps and everything. I, I, I just had to clean it up and get everything situated and ready for a new year here. Um, you can see my alcohol pens here, some colored pencils. If there's certain types of inks that you're always going through and re-inking, why not have them right there on your table? Uh, the different types of uh, media that I'm working with these days are acrylic paint pens. Really love those types of pens in my work. I don't always have this one right here. These are the three millimeters, but the 0.7 uh, millimeters, the extra fine ones are really great. Um, Dye-based inks, Marvy, um, Brilliance, Memento, Distress, um, uh, moonlight duos over here, different types of um, pigment inks and whatnot. Uh, Marvy 1500 series um, dye-based ink pens. Paint brushes I don't use too much, but you know, occasionally they're broken out for certain types of things. Like I used that one on my Northern Lights piece recently. Different types of sponge applicators, okay? You don't need too many fancy types of applicators. The regular kitchen sponges, the little um, makeup wedges are really fantastic in terms of their um, density and ability to absorb and transfer inks and whatnot. Different types of paint pens here. Um, here's my little credit cards that I use to apply my um, pigment inks to, you know, my reinker inks to my pads over there. And getting those handy. If there's certain types of um, stamps that you're using all the time, you know, in terms of like textural types of stamps and whatnot. I just use, leave them out. I don't have them all out here. I don't, there's a lot of them that I use a lot, but I, I don't know. I just tidied them all up recently. And I don't know, they'll end up on my desk again here before too long. Okay. Uh, different types of papers. Um, I don't know. When I sit down to do something, if I just have it kind of ready to go, <laughs> it's a lot nicer than having to figure out, okay, I need a piece of, uh, you know, kind of slimline red foil and having to go, you know, grab it and cut it out. So I have a stack of papers here ready to go, you know, some glossy, some um, silk weight papers and whatnot. Blocks uh, with uh, the tack and peel applied to it. I just found this block and I don't have tack and peel on it, but... I need um, kind of a thinner block, so I'm glad I found that one. And I'm going to apply tack and peel to that. Your water bottle and paper towels should always be handy. So this is my little setup right here. You can see my overhead lighting for the videos. I usually have just the left and right side ones because the top one creates too much glare for my work down there. Um. And here's my camera set up with my swing arm down here. And see, this is really convenient because there's a little adjustment screw there. So I'm able to hang my um, heat gun right on that. Okay. All right, so here's the setup right here. I'll just do a quick overview of these. They're just standard IKEA bookshelves right here. But I've organized and consolidated all of my papers and supplies for the first time. Um, probably still need to do a little bit of tweaking and whatnot, but um, let's just start up here from the top, okay? We have our um, spray adhesives and spray sealants. A lot of people are asking me what I use about that. You know, for those types of things like vellums and whatnot, spray adhesives, the Super 77 from... 3M's excellent for that. I believe that's the really old can. I think that's the newer can. At least it looks like it um, in terms of the style. UV resistant clear. That's my go-to kind of general spray for just about everything. Um, pad racks. Does anyone have these types of pad um, kind of uh, organizers? I bought those at a couple um, conventions uh, way back when, when you know, conventions used to have these people selling these types of uh, things for your organization. Mostly of your stamps, um, you know, wood-mounted stamps, but they had a lot of things like that. Or, I have always loved this. I wish I had two of these ones for my, um, you know, uh, pens and pencil types of things. Really great. 
different types of inks here. You always have to have a brayer kind of handy. Look at all of my different re-inkers and powders and embossing powders and whatnot. Uh, the recent glow in the dark. Look at this. I found this one right here. The glow in the dark glitter. Um, made in the USA. I don't know. I'll have to hold that up to light and see if that works or not. Because if it does, that'll be a great accessory for my glow-in-the-dark types of explorations with my glow-in-the-dark uh, paint there, glitter, and paper. This is one of my favorite um, accessories these days. It's just the Tech Unite, really inexpensive set of uh, clear um, crystal rhinestones. These are all my uh, batteries that I have to have handy because I, you know, need a battery pack for my microphone um, right over here. That's what I'm always talking into and whatnot. Um, different types of papers. Okay, so this is my scrap paper thing. Just regular cardstock right there from Staples. Mohawk Everyday Digital. This is what this paper looks like. I picked up some um, clearance packs, but they're the 80 pound text, I think, or something like that. But I'm going to sell those um, very inexpensively to some customers because I was at um, Kelly Paper and they were on the clearance rack, so some people might want those. Um, King James, does anyone recognize the name King James? That was a glossy cardstock that um, was really fantastic back in the day, and I still use them. I have two reams. I sold many reams. Um, I had like a case of these things, but I sold a lot on eBay years ago. There's a black light, you know, from my recent uh, glow-in-the-dark tests. Okay, so white-coated silk, Appleton Papers. I think this was called the dull paper right here. Um, those are kind of, they're closer to matte paper, but they have a little bit of a coating on it similar to glossy, but they're just not glossy, okay? They just have a little bit of a, uh, a coating on it to retain a lot more saturation and richness of the media that's being applied to it, mainly printer inks, but it works great for us in the crafting community with things like dye-based inks, alcohol inks, etc. Okay, these types of papers like this and this can also, you can use um, dry media on it like, uh, I don't know, like chalks, pastels, and things like that because it has a little bit of tooth. It's not ideal for those ones, colored pencil, you know, but you can do it on those ones where you can't do it on something like a glossy card stuff. These are eight uh, tabloid size, 11 by 17 papers right here. Hardly ever done um, 11 by 17 scenes once in a while, but not too often. Let's swing around here. These are different types of brands of glossy card stock. This one right here, this one's an old um, chrome coat. Okay, that was the true chrome coat brand. These days, Chrome Coat is sold by CTI, and what it is is a rebranded um, Binda Coat. CTI Binda Coat, okay? They just named it Chrome Coat uh, for name recognition. But the Binda Coat is pretty good, though. I've, I've used it, and it's uh, acceptable. It's not the same as Chrome Coat, um, but it's it works pretty good, and it's pretty similar, okay? Not all, not all glossy cardstocks are the same. This one's a paste setter. Okay, it's super, super um, glossy, and it came from Australia from my client um, that uh, used to bring me packs of paper <laughs> when they would come over to things like the Carson show or um, CHA shows and things like that. They would bring me a pack of that because I like glossy, and it, there was nothing glossier than that. The only problem with this type of glossy was it's so glossy, you really have to wait for inks to dry on it before you can apply a new one when it got too built up because a lot of it would be floating on the surface like that until it really got set up and whatnot. More types of supplies in here, a lot of inks and paints and this is my art case from school with Conte crayons and charcoals and graphite and whatnot. Gel pens, 180 pen set with 180 refills for like I don't know, it's like under $30. This is the Shuttle Art um, alcohol pen set. And I use these ones still. I just moved it from my desk because I was, you know, kind of making some room up there. But um, if you don't have any type of um, uh, alcohol pens, this is a really great way to go. Just get one of these gigantic packs right here 
and buy it. You know, 88 pens cost, I think, under $40, okay? That's cheap, you know, in terms of, like, a alcohol pens. And then if you find that you like certain types of colors or something like that, you can buy, like, a brand name pen or whatever in those colors. But you can have these other colors that, you know, you wouldn't use too often, but you still might like to have for the, you know the odd times that you are using it, but it's a 50 cent pen, so you can have a full range of values of a given hue, you know, and uh, use it, and, uh, you know, it's it's just really inexpensive to have just a huge amount of pens. And like I said, if you want to go for, you know, kind of a more expensive pack or individual pens, then you know what colors that you're using all the time, you know, to get them in that brush um, kind of incarnation. More different types of inks here. These are Luma dyes, okay? So Luma dyes, that's like the art kind of world dye um, dyes that you would see. Now they have um, Dr. Martens and things like that. And, uh, you know, that's, they're the same general inks as your dye-based um, pads, okay? Just in the art world. Three-dimensional media, reindeer moss, and... Uh, little bushes like that. I always thought that um, scenic stamping should be kind of, I don't know, go, you know, we should go three-dimensional with it. I've been doing this illusion of three-dimensional types of space with the foils and whatnot, but kind of using little things like that. That's a scene that I did years ago in that frame, kind of in a window box type of format right there. Uh, okay. And uh, here's a bunch of uh, stamp board types of things. Those are my uh, that's my box creation that I did because I was the one that was developing um, stamp board with ampersand art um, for the crafting market. So those are a couple stampscape scenes. You can see the inside of that box right there has some of those little dried flowers right there in the foreground of that Lakeside Cove scene. Here's that top of that box right there. And here's a bunch of boxes and stamp board products. Um, they don't call it stamp board anymore. It's called um, clay board uh, craft craft boards. Or, I can't remember. Sorry about that. Envelopes. Uh, more stamp board in here. Okay, these are my papers right here. These are my stack of metallic papers. I don't have a huge number of papers. A lot of you have a lot more than I do. These are my iridescent papers, but then I have my foils down here, like the recollection foils that I've been using. There's the gold pack of, uh, 60 pack of foils. This is my 60 pack of silver. You know, you buy one of those packs for like $17 each, and it really lasts you a long time. You can use them for so many different things. Um, they're out of the silver right now, but they, it'll come back in stock. And here's a bunch of the rainbow holographics, okay? And uh, uh, Recollections has it now, so it's really accessible. The Chrome Coat ones I bought a bunch of when I realized uh, they weren't around anymore, so. Um, but, you know, the Recollection one is excellent. There's some different types of uh, funky types of pa uh, papers and whatnot. Glow in the dark paper. Look at this one right here. Some sort of like holographic type of thing. I have no idea what I'm going to use them for, but, you know. I'm a crafter just like anyone else, and I buy things that sometimes I don't get around to using. This is bought at Cute Stuff in uh, Honolulu, uh, uh, Hawaii, and Oahu, yeah, I don't know, 20 years ago, practically. Stamp sets, okay, and this is my binder full of my unmounted dies in these different types of sleeves, okay? Uh, like trading card sleeves and coin sleeves and currency sleeves and whatnot, so you can get, I don't know, this is a four-inch binder right here, a three-ring binder, and you can get a lot of stamps in there. I wouldn't be surprised if there's, I don't know, three or four hundred stamps in there, okay, of different sizes. Um, you hear me mentioning the uh, pre-folded cards, okay? I'm using those a lot for these um, mirror cards just because I'm lazy. And I have a pre-folded card already ready to go, but <laughs> this one's right here at Kelly Paper. I always mention, if you have a Kelly Paper near you, this used to be on their um, clearance thing. So, uh, 25 cards, okay? $3 on their clearance section. It's not $3 anymore. I went in there, and all their clearance things are like 30% off instead of like 90% off. 
off already, you know, an inexpensive price, but papers and things like that have like skyrocketed in price. So I don't know what these ones go for. That's why I have kind of funky colors, you know. Here's three Pinot Noir, you know, four uh, Pinot Noir um, pre-folded cards. Because, you know, people weren't, you know, purple's not like the most popular color in, you know, any types of papers that they have. They're um, their clearance section is the stuff that they're getting rid of. Uh, Costco pack right here with um, cloud photo, you know, prints. If you're getting a lot of them, you know, they're really inexpensive just to, you know, upload. And, well, these days you can't go pick them up at Costco, but uh, they'll send it to you. Or you can have it printed off at, you know, local, I don't know, other types of stores with printing areas, I guess. I don't know. I, I don't know who has those little printing things anymore. Everyone used to, you know, get it printed out at CVS or something like that. There are other types of papers, you know. Uh, these ones are all, the, the, it was like $3 there, clearance section. I don't know. I, I went there last time and I thought, I didn't see anything like 3 bucks anymore. It was like $11 on clearance. So it's like, oh man, okay, that, you know. That was a, it was a nice dream while it was, you know, what was available. These are different types of uh, colored papers right here. Look at this one right here. I got this whole thing of Eclipse Black Astro Brights. 80 pound cover, all black, you know. And I use black a lot, so I figured I'll get a full ream of it because I used that to, uh, like, mount my uh, cards to a lot, you know, just in uh, kind of formatting them into uh, card formats and whatnot. So... Anyways, that's kind of a look around here, you know. This is not going to look like this for very long. You know, you do one project and it's like this, you know. You know, a pile of stuff and then the only kind of available spot on your work table is like the encroachment of all this stuff around. And, you know, we're here we are working on like a tiny little area because everything else is cluttered. So that's the way my place looks all the time. It never looks like this, but uh, I don't know. I'm not embarrassed by, you know, all the clutter and whatnot because that's just the way it goes. But uh, I thought, I don't know, maybe I should record this just so I can look at it in the future and say, oh my gosh, that was so tidy and whatnot. So here's my contraption right here. We'll have some kind of live streaming going on, a lot, you know, live broadcasts and workshops and whatnot. Like, share, and subscribe to these videos, you know, it helps the algorithm with YouTube, you know, and it helps me, you know, get uh, a little bit more, uh, you know, viewer uh, traffic over the thing, and, and I buy things like, uh, you know, like microphones, and I need, like, a stand for this uh, computer right here, you know, to get that off my table right there, and I don't know, just better sound and stuff for my videos and stuff like that, so... It does go into, uh, you know, kind of improvements to all these different types of uh, things that I'm working on, you know, back when I didn't have these lights or very not right, you know, going on like that and, uh, and whatnot uh, for these vids. So, um, yeah. Okay, so anyways, for those of you who are watching, I appreciate the, uh, the viewing and so on and so forth. Hopefully we'll get some good kind of improvements with my videos in 2022 here, including some, uh, like I said, those live workshops and broadcasts. So hopefully we'll see you in some of those. Okay. Thanks for watching.